Don't ask us why, but some phones out there do not come with the best features enabled out of the box. And here are some of the worst culprits and some things we think you should enable right now if you haven't done so already. So yeah, let's get it. If you like this kind of thing or deeper dives into anything and everything related to Android, then how about you do me a favor and join the team by hitting the subscribe button. It's a good time. Trust me. Cheers. Just a little note up top. This is not for the hardcore Android fan, but sometimes even hardcore Android fans forget to enable things when setting up a new phone or restoring an existing phone. Even some of these you might not know about. I know that I always forget a few things here and there because I get bogged down with other things and especially get annoyed when things aren't working or doing so as I expect them to. Having made a switch to a new phone or an old favorite and yeah, it's frustrating. So this is why we're making this video. Some of these functions may be limited to specific hardware or have different names and we'll try our best to translate or customize for each major device maker where possible. You'll see notes on screen when that is the case. Let's get one of my favorites out of the way first. I think what this is one of the most useful features added to Android over the past five years, that is notification history. And it still isn't enabled by default on most phones. This is a really good feature because it gives you, or at least gives you the opportunity to see something you may have missed or accidentally swiped away by dismissing in the quick settings panel or from your lock screen. And it allows you to scroll back and find out who or what sent you each device ping on your phone. So when we have loads of apps vying for our attention, I think it is nice to at least be able to see something that we might have missed or skipped accidentally. You can't go back and view missed notifications prior to this feature being enabled. So that's why we're saying make sure you do it right away as if you miss a notification and you don't have this enabled, well, you're stuck. Another thing that Google really annoys us with is that it does not set up the Android version of Find My Device on your phone by default, no. You have to go in and manually set this up by signing into your account and activating the Find My Device or Find Hub feature on Android phones. Otherwise, if you misplace your phone, you lose it, you put it somewhere and you can't find it, you won't be able to track it, ping it or even lock it remotely. God forbid someone does something nefarious with it. This app also lets you track other accessories like earbuds, headphones and tracker tags. Although, yeah, the jury's out on whether they're worth having. It's super useful though, as you can do things like ping your phone if you misplace it, lay a ring so you can find it down the couch cushion or whatever it is. Just make sure that you do this as soon as you set up your phone. I'll go ahead and do it right now. If you have set up your new phone, it is worth doing. You can't do it later if you lose your phone. So yeah, another thing like notification history, go ahead and do it. You won't regret it. And God forbid, as I say, if you've ever lose your phone or break it, I do think that is a frustration in its own right. But having your phone stolen is not only traumatic, it's stressful, worrying about what sensitive data might be accessible to those would be thieves. You should therefore 100% enable theft detection on your phone as soon as you're able, preferably right after setting that device up. The suite includes lots of little things that ensure people can't snoop on your device, even if they happen to get past your lock screen. I think one of the best is offline device lock as it gives you the opportunity or it locks your phone, sorry, as soon as you lose connection to the internet or lose signal once theft detection has been activated. Remote lock is another thing you should enable right away too, as in tandem with Find Hub, which hopefully you've activated, as I just said, you can track your phone, track the location of it and wipe it if you're really concerned about the data. Yes, theft detection, go ahead and do that right now. It's a really good feature. I'm glad Google added this over the past few years. And although I hate saying this out loud, flip to shh, is one of those underrated features that you don't realize you need until you have access to it. It's not available on all phones out there, but when it's activated, your phone should turn on do not disturb mode and fully silence all distractions. Even if you don't use silent or vibrate mode, it works just the same as soon as you put your phone face down. So it's quiet when face down, back to normal when face up. It'll sync with your Pixel Watch if you have a Pixel Watch as well. So it's hard not to recommend to everyone. And I highly recommend you do this as it's one of those things that can help you eliminate distractions really quickly. Just put your phone face down and it's all taken care of. To expand upon that, I think, is there anything worse than getting a loud notification ping when you're trying to unwind or God forbid you're trying to sleep? I'd wager no, which is why I think bedtime mode is such a great option to have as part of that digital wellbeing suite on your phone. The good news here is that you can set things to whitelist for notifications if you do need to be aware of specific pings, for instance, like maybe you have a baby monitor or something like that. You have controls to darken the screen here as well. So you can set your phone display to grayscale so that you're less likely to sit up and use your phone all night as it is not that fun to use it on grayscale. Bedtime mode is a really useful way to minimize those distractions. And I think also a really great way to wind down 
at the end of the day. And I think most people will probably benefit from setting up a bedtime mode on their phone within digital wellbeing settings. So almost all modern Android phones have a basic mode to help those less technical literate get around on the screen, get around the OS. On Pixels, there is a really cool feature that goes a little bit, it's a little bit more simplified here. It's just called Simple View and it changes things to use on-screen navigation buttons, increases text or icon size that you can see everything more legibly and more clearly. For those though with minor vision impairments, I think this is a really good option. However, I do think it could also be another great option for the less technically inclined people in your life who maybe struggle with the default settings on phones, especially as gestures are coming really, really important for phones. And most features will just work as expected. It's just a really nice way to help those people get around. All it does is help with navigation. It doesn't inhibit the experience or hide them behind deep customization sections as you can toggle this on off or on, sorry, easily. And that's why I recommend if you are someone who's giving a phone to someone, maybe using an old phone, handing it on to someone, get simple mode set up and I think they'll really enjoy it. The annoying thing is that I have to say, not all Android phones do have an adaptive tone function, but those that do, don't always have it active right out the box. Uh, take for example, the Pixel 10 Pro. It needs to be enabled, otherwise it doesn't work. So what adaptive tone does is it adjusts the color tone brightness of your screen and uh, changes it throughout the day to fit your surroundings, effectively fixing the white balance and therefore reducing the eye strain or the strain on your eyes. In isolation, this sounds crazy, but when enabled, you should have a better experience everywhere as your display is making alterations to ensure things look as good as they can. And I highly recommend that this is a really good option. Adaptive tone is separate to other eye comfort shield features that a lot of phones come with. Those tend to just adjust the display warmth throughout the day to help reduce blue light fatigue. But in tandem with that, you can stack these functions if you want total eye care from your phone's display. And it does improve the experience drastically in every single scenario. So yeah, go ahead and set that one up. Another thing you might not realize is that that screen protective you've thrown on your screen is not gonna be ideal with touchscreens. Yeah, pretty obvious, right? Therefore, we'd recommend enabling the screen protector mode that 99% of phones out there have. This ups the sensitivity of the touch surface under that screen protector so that lighter taps are needed or re registered and reacted to. It mitigates that extra layer of plastic or glass and depending on the thickness of the screen protector can make a big difference to how well your phone works and interacts or reacts to interactions. It's worth noting that this might help some phones with in-display fingerprint scanners as well. But if you're having issues, then you could just try enabling this and this could provide a quick fix rather than having to replace that screen protector or get rid of it entirely. We all know phones are not getting smaller. I think there are barely any small phones out there. And to make matters worse, nor are some user interface sections. The solution is to scale up the UI, but if you prefer keeping things as intended, and I think it looks a lot better that way anyway, then a one-handed mode might be useful to you. On most phones, this works by swiping down on the gesture bar, if you have gesture navigations enabled, then your entire display will shift down. This allows you to use or reach areas that would ordinarily be closer to the status bar. So when you're using your phone one-handed, it means you can reach those places without contorting your, your fingers. It's something not everyone will use or need, but can be useful in a pinch. So that's why I think it's 100% worth enabling. And while you might not use Gboard, I think there are other options out there that do this. If you do, you'll know it's arguably the best keyboard on Android right now. It has some great features, but one that still isn't active by default is the clipboard function. This can do things like save copy text and even images for quick reuse across all of your device. For security, I get it. It's disabled by default and it is disabled at password entry screens as well, if you're worried about that. So it also automatically clears everything on your clipboard around an hour or so or after around an hour or so, so it doesn't get clogged up or expose any sensitive information that you might have copied. You can pin things if you want to keep that certain copied information available permanently, but I find this super useful for things like emails or maybe sometimes I'll need some directions somewhere, but I would say proceed with caution there. To access this, just tap the four square icon on the left of the options within the status bar then hit the clipboard icon, enable it, and you'll get a brand new UI that will take you through the steps you need to use this. And I think it's well worth doing if you do use Gboard day to day. So that's a few things we think you should get set up before you get your phone running. And if you haven't done so, go ahead and do that right now. I think you'll benefit from it. But I wanna ask you, what do you enable right away? Or what do you forget to enable on your phone? I think then you'll kind of do things later down the, down the road and you're like, oh yeah, why didn't I have that for a long period of time? Let me know down in the comment sections below. I actually hope that I've reminded you of even one thing to enable. If it does help you out, then this video has been a success to me. Cheers for watching though, and I will, as always, speak to you later.